Don't forget the clocks go forward one hour on Sunday, so we get an hour less of rain. <laughs> Except for you, Rowley. Sorry. Yeah, we've had it all day. Sorry about that, mate. Did you know when it comes down to it, the only knowledge that really matters is how to purify water, how to grow your own food, how to cook, how to build, and how to love? And funnily enough, we're not taught any of this in school. What's he doing wrong there? Walking on a raised bed. To me, he is. This is why women live longer than men. They've got a ladder on the bottom, balancing on that roof, tied to that. The knees up there, look at that. You've got a lot here. Right, this is the, um, just after the last zoom, obviously two weeks ago. Don't want uh, too much more of that. Uh, because we've been, this, don't forget, this is from last, uh, soon before last, so we've had a couple of good frosts. So the stuff is still in the greenhouse, or was. Because you get frost, you get nice sunny days. So I've uh, revamped, put my nuts and bolts again on the automatic windows. So they open up during the day. Two of them done. And the uh, winter jacket has come off my compost bin. Still got the black plastic around it. That'll uh, absorb the sun and the heat. So every week, chop and mix my greens, bung them in as normal. Mix that in, get a waiter in, and then cover it. Somebody else put this on, keep calm, make compost. Peace cycling is the latest. No, it isn't the latest. Big green around for moon, should you be peeing on your compost? No, I put that on the bottom, yes. I also put a lot of kids when young, now both six footers. Does work. Right, me uh, canners in the greenhouse. These are bone dry from when I put them in. So, what it just shows you there is moisture on the bottom of the pots because I've started shooting again. But it will be uh, a couple of weeks before I split these. But that's what I go for originally. The variegated leaf and then the flower is a bonus. Love it. And there's another nicer. There's a nice leaf and all. But uh, we split them later on. I asked my mate Sylvain in uh, Canada. Them photos I've just showed you. I sent them to him. And uh, basically, do they look virus free? All look perfectly healthy at this point. That's all I wanted to know. And uh, starting off from seed, some people file them, soak them, and you see they just grinding a bit of the, the hard skin off, just till they get a nice slip, bit of white, and and uh, that helps them out to germinate. Still on canners, somebody put these on. You see, that's the original photo where he's out all his canners down on the border of his lawn. And uh, these are just spot, started to come through now, and he's taking the old rubbish off. And you can just see the shoot there. So I asked him, what frost have you had, please? Hoping to leave a couple on myself, end of the year. Uh, and he come back this year, appeared in one week, minus seven, minus eight at night. And during the day, minus two. That's good enough for me. Plus, I did a talk last week. I think it was my second talk. And I was uh, a new slide now I put on the end of all my talks. Because I finished the plot. Well, my plot now is a bad guy. And I showed uh, I put a photo in the back garden. It was when the canners were in flower. And I always say to anybody, does anybody start growing canners? And there's a woman there and has been growing them the last three years and she's left one outside for the last two years and has got away with it just put mulch on it up against the fence obviously so you've got that protection as well so that's what i'm doing end of the year and there's a mate again Sylvain from um, canada obviously he gets the 
bad weather, but he also gets the northern lights and he's had some spectacular photos on. Somewhere we can get down here. Although we have a couple of just slight bits. Well, I'm bad just said this is where the U re, U, uh, uh, reunion was, the mob. So I had to go down and suss it out. Just to send to the troops what beers and ciders and uh, arms they got on. So I'll just leave it in there and have a look at the, the setup. Where we were staying, which is the Premier Inn, straight opposite. And that's coming out of the Premier Inn in the morning, breakfast in there. And this is going back through the lanes, there's Caslon Primary School, Brandy Town Football Club, Abbey Road Allotments. So just legging it back, just coming this way, I couldn't see all the eggs, going back, and all this is a uh, stable manure. All on it. Uh, good to pick up in a dryish day. Right, this is in the paper last week. 33 million for vets, basically, is for housing. Some of the housing I'm living in is crap. And for quite a few things to look after the vets, which is common sense to me. Right, rooshing up the park in the morning. And the uh, nettles have just started coming through. Always a good sign for me, because I should be nicking them later on. And that's the main one for me as well, comfrey. Because uh, I can't get it now, it's only down the plot. I'm just borrow it from this little patch, and I've taken the hound. So it's good to see him come through again. That's where I took the hound as well, you see the badges are out. I had to put that on. Just fostered a dog. Excellent. Love it. You've got to have a sense of humour. Now you've been me on. Also I'll waffle through your photos. He's not on me. Really? Right, our first inputter is obviously Dave from Chesterfield. And uh, he's, he's trying to... These are eight, uh, eight ounce onions. It's just two weeks ago he sent me these. They've probably got probably um, twice the size of that by now. So it's two new varieties he's trying, or two new for him. Uh, they're like normal onions. So he's got two lots there with the orange and the blue pot legs. And they're nice and clean, nice and green. Always does well with them as well. Yeah, they have pot. I've got four lots there. And some seedlings coming through. You see, he puts the micrads on the top as well, as I do with most things. Thank you for that, Dave. Nice little input. Right, Florida, the top one. Cradle at the bottom one. <laughs> you could just imagine that one in the middle. No, Cradle Eat. Gordon Bennett. Right, <coughs> Ray Pooler passed away. Um, I went down to our local, or up our local forest in Collier. And uh, cheers, Ray. You and uh, Kay have done us proud. Got a game Garley Club. Uh, I asked her to get, uh, because it was a daily judging exhibitor, I asked her to get dahlias. Obviously, they call get freshened. But, uh, I went to three different places from Buddhas or Colligate to sort us out. And these were perfect. It was like pressed for them as well. It turned out there was um, a florist at the, at the church. And I couldn't believe they, they weren't real. So he'd been chuffed with them. So I got that ready. Right, ready to go down. I put my suit on, get my shoes out. Good thing about fire service, they did decent shoes, and I still use them for weddings and that. Boot brushes from the mob, so they're missing a bit of time. A new bit of material for the hound. I ain't doing that noise before when the rustles in it. <coughs> and a good turnout. 
represented the Conigate Garden Club and myself, obviously. And after the, um, it was a private burial. Uh, me and we um, all went to the reception after for a um, bit of a drink, a pint, and a couple of bit to eat. Give Trevor a, a lift up there from the church. So I'm just saying, I thought that looked like Trevor, even yeah. though I can't see his head. Yeah. <laughs> You'll recognise him. Yeah. Sorry. He bought me a pint, he's a good lad. So I went and had a word with Kay, and uh, might be moving, because the house is too big for the now, down Collegate Greenway somewhere. He was good. Did a grub, part two. Right, our uh, last speaker which we had in our garden clubs was uh, Philippa on sweet peas. Now when they come in, she donated, because that's our raffle prizes, people donate things, and she donated that one there. Which is, uh, it is a sweet pea, you can tell by the top, type of sweet pea. But uh, there's quite a bit of, um, it explained it to the, to the group there, and basically they sent me these two packets they call a spring pea, uh, based perennial L vernus, whatever the L stands for, and that it's classed as a, a spring pea. Tiny odd seed can take between two weeks and two years to germinate. Two years, good, Bennett. No wonder there ain't many about. That's why I says, if successful, please give out the seedlings. Basically, if you look back on that one, it is a dwarf pea. So it'll grow like that, and that's it. It'll come back every year. So there are many about. And the, that's what it looks like. And then the flowers on it, um, it turns into a sweet pea flower. Put them embossed in. And the dwarf, basis perennials. Uh, the basis means that the plant has non-woody stems that reach their full height and produce flower within one year before dying back over the winter and then reappearing the following spring ready for a repeat performance meaning you just leave it in and it flowers itself the term perennial essentially means that the plant will live for more than two years i hope so if it takes two years to germinate that's why there ain't many about it so I'm having a go at them. Right, this is last week trying to sort my seeds in. Well, I've got to sort them out. This is the gladi corn and the um, sweet peas. Another one, the dried seed head and the snapdragon. One for the goth so This weird aid. Draw me town when Ben did his picture. Right in the middle is the Tipton twins, obviously from Tipton. One of them come down to our zone and uh, had nosing dancers, bought some black country cards. But uh, doing well for 98. Still fit, they've got all the faculties. Right, when frost saw our forecast, I think we've had two now, and I've put these covers on. Um, so this was obviously about 10 days ago. And I've just covered these up. Some are right by the wall, and, and it's got a bit of protection to get away with it. The stuff in the greenhouse as well, and the, not the greenhouse, the tunnel, that was all covered as well. Even if it's just a bit of newspaper, just bump it on. Better than nothing. So that's on the morning, as you can see there, that has been a good frost. That's white over there. It's, it's just to stop. The frost tipping the ends, it's like if it's growing taters and it, um, the frost burns the taters. I'm just protecting them. Well, this should be doing the paper round in the morning for the oldens. For the oldens, I'm nearly there myself. He's the only bloke in Collingate who has his front door wide open during the day. He's wrapped up mine. 
little worm going on. I thought I'll uh, bring him back to life. Couldn't do it. Got him nice and warm, nice and moist. Now, uh, first one I've never bought back, so I couldn't bury him at sea, it was range at sea. So I bumped him the one in my raised bed. Get him in paper off all me chaps on the big cover the night before. Rushen, having the nose round. Them lot uncovered as well. I had to take one of me, um, I took the missus car, and got a, got a leaf underneath. Basically it was an oil some plug was leaking. The sealer got. So walking back home, I thought I'd take a shortcut up Talbot Street because that was our first house when I come out of the mob. Uh, that cost 11 grand. It was there two years. Uh, Mrs. become pregnant. It steps up to the entry. Obviously, Corgi had a really grandma push chair up there. It was an end terrace. And as you can see there, even getting a push chair up there, don't forget, then in 78, when we had this, you ain't got little super duper push chairs, which you got now, and they were big wheels. And there's no way the missus could have got one up there on the top. So that was the main reason of moving, basically. Uh, where am I? When I was in the mob, the only thing then, when you, when you pay, went straight into a, a POSB, which is a post office savings bank. I don't, don't think even more than fair that he used a bank. Everybody was paid cash straight in the building site or something. But uh, every time I come home, I took it out the um, POSB, put it in there. I think that's West Bromwich, West Bromwich building site then, just to save some money up. When I left the mob, and I got a good dollar for money in. I asked them for a mortgage, and they told me to clear off. I said, you cheeky bugger. So I went around Halifax. I said, right, I've been me home for 12 years saving, and asked you for a mortgage. Would you give me one? I says, yeah. Explain to him, ex forces. I says, right, if I get it out of it, um, West Bromwich Building Sides an hour and put it in yours. Will you give me a mortgage? She said, of course you will. So that's what I did. So West Brom, no down in the books. Uh, YouTube post, that's my biggest hit. Uh, 10,000 views, that was three years ago. So I put the so shit, I told Compost. Still a good one. Just open it and read it. You don't need a password. Uh, right, my lemon. I'm still feeding the mobile phone. As you can see there. And there's my feed for the chaps. More for all my citrus. And that's my young baby. Uh, this is what I've got on the big end. Well, the whole the flowers on them. and that one is made dead romanium and on the bottom I've got new growth coming through so I'm, I'm doing right by him as well right Aaron when he moved out we've still got loads in here of Aaron's in fact he was here this afternoon and he went back home without taking anything this is throwing a fist right my first talk last week uh, this was Wednesday, the 15th. This was a Royal Leamington Spa Horticultural Society. This is a the under the Coventry here. Yeah. Uh, this is a parish council building, and it was the last time they could have it in this hall. They cost some 30 quid a night to hire. Well, I got paid for electric like everything nowadays. But a nice big screen projector, I just plugged everything into theirs. Plugged my stuff as normal. St. Peter's Parish Centre, meaning Parish Council. Different place I've been to all over the UK, uh, a lot of sites as well. I've talked to them, 
holds of the plots. If it's a parish character, there's some weird and wonderful rooms. Because uh, some parishes are stuck in the ways and they won't well, move with the times. And this one here, it says uh, I'm, I'm stopping everybody using the building. And the uh, church has got more money than anyone still. And that was a good talk. Uh, they enjoyed it and I enjoyed it. In the end, it was a good turnout. I think it was 38 in the end, which ain't bad. And uh, five blokes as well. You know, women out, number the blokes every time. But five blokes, that's a good turnout and all. Right, stuff's still in the greenhouse. So we're still getting a uh, frost. That's where I'm bumming you know. up. Here's my peach, bonanza, loads of blossom on him again. And it was about this time last year that I had delivered in the same state as well, full of blossom. So he's in the tunnel, as you can see there. So I'm moving back in there, giving a good way to it. And that's my mate's uh, peach tree. Um, John Murphy from down Torton, he put that photo on as well, so he is in the same position as mine. Uh, stuff drying out in the greenhouse, they like you get a good wear through, like we're doing there. Open eight, like Jeffrey, got your hand up, mate. Got a question? Yeah, just a question about the peach tree. Yeah. How does it pollinate itself? Do you do it with the brush or because this no, time of year there are no bees or anything? It is self pollinating, but in that sense, exactly the same <laughs> what I used to do with uh, tomatoes years ago. When I walked past, I just uh, knocked the stem. And when I miss spray weekly, I'll miss spray them as well. We'll come on to that later on. But it's, it's, it is self pollinating, that's why I did. Well, I'm just opening my mouth by knocking the stem and fully feeding with a fine mist later on. Okay, Jeffrey. Right, Lizzie sent me this one. It was a young, whatever. Anybody recognise the chap? I've messaged you. So I forgot what I said it was. I don't know. Put a, a young bit little chap in the road in the back of a garden. Is that the bird that you said you've got, Mick? No. Yep. No, he's a young girl. Different one. Mm. I've seen him again during the week. Went to take his photo, he's cleared off. I don't know where he's coming now. Right, got any corms planting? You're organised with them. So it's a full size seed tray. Paper in the bottom, stop all the crap coming out. And then there's a 15 tray insert. And plastic drinking cups will sit in them. But quite a few do. Plastic drinking cups. Um, Colin, we ain't seen him for a while. From Tamworth. Hope he's alright. I better message him. Ready for next week. But he, he sent me them, sent me a box of uh, plastic cup drinking cups. He's a good lad. Uh, Nigel Co. He sent me them. Tell Christine White. He's just 400 size. So my cups are just sliced two bits off. You can see one there for drainage. See perfectly in a tray insert. Right, what have we got there? So that's clover compost. So uh, two and a half litre pot is it? I've got a, a pot full of clover compost. I'm bunging him into an empty compost bag. And there's a uh, vermiculite that'll go in as well. And then that one there, which I just filled up. There's my own compost with the uh, worms taken out, obviously. That lot is all mixed together, upended the bag eight or nine times. 
So that's my mix now, ready for the pots. So let me just go in a three quarters inch from the top. Put a paper on the bottom of the pots again to stop the compost dropping through the holes. Getting quite a few done, starting getting dark, so I thought what to do me for tonight. So I covered all them so they didn't dry out so turn the bag over the compost to the next day. Got me gladdies out, well my corms, my corners I should stay. Uh, there's loads which um, some of them are, are one offs, like an orange with a yellow inner, and that's 100 days to germinate or to flower from planting out. Um, a prim lady, I think looks like him, and that flower between 80 and 90. But that's only a rough idea because obviously you get bigger every year. So that lot is what I'm going to get through. And uh, you can either clean them off, but I'll, I'll, I'll be bothered. I've still got enough labels if I just cut the tops off. So I'm just using the clean bits off that. So Lady Ellen, which is a prim. Love it. Nice yellow. Which I've got there. So that's what I'm bumming. Singular beauty. Loving them all. So I'll get my labels and my pots ready. Just put them in the cup. Uh, <coughs> no, I just sent me these as well. I think these are new ones that come out. P22, I wonder what that is. That's Lady Ellen, we know that one, UK print. And aesthetic 455. Right, this pen is um, uh, brilliant. Steve and Lynn got me this when I was out Paris and about. They go all over gardening clubs and whatever. Steve Lynn from Brum, brilliant. Boston little thing. Of course, that's the nib on it. So when you write your labels, brilliant. No good thick as a ferry. So my corner support in the bottom. Don't forget these cups I've been uh, cut because I don't have nothing to rig out. Right, that's them lot ready. Now I've got to get some of my, um, my can of seeds sorted as well. So I put five in the bottom of a, a pot. I did the same with them. Put the names of what's gone in. I've got my spares which are in there. Then I'm going to fill everything up, well not fill them, but at the bottom. Just fill that up with water. This is with me, gladi omelets and the can as well, just to and let them soak. Which they're doing there. Also bunging them in pots. Um, A two and a half litre pot, yeah. It's usually an inch and a half, inch and three quarters separate uh, distance. So I'll get six round the outside, and one in the middle. And then cover them about three quarters inch of compost. That one, as you can see, is a prim Shalimar. It's a nice red Boston little prim, is. And one of his superbs. He was an off cut. This was like um, a white ruffled, but it got a tinge of colour in the, in the throat as well. But he was a one off. So I just put him down last year and got the babies from him. It's a bit out of focus, but you'll see the top and the bottom. Just take your time bung them in. And if they look naff, they are naff. Just bin it. You ain't, gonna, you ain't gonna get better, you ain't gonna mend, just bin it. You've usually got enough spares anyway. So, just working away along. <coughs> so, I've got quite a few in them lot. And I've still got a few left over. 
which I'm going to keep along with the other spare seeds. I'm going to go down Crady Town again. The bank as you walk up opposite our trade shed, which is on the left, obviously. I'm just going to throw, scatter all my spare seed in the corners so it's got a bit of colour on LDR. As if he's still talking next time we go down. Sweet peas. I admire from these Eagle Sweet Peas. They do exhibition of a seed. So I bought this 10 variety bag, which was uh, cheaper than buying loose. First thing I've got to do, propagator in the shed. Finally, I've usually got a greenhouse full. Put a photo on today, and the greenhouse was chocker, pot leaves, blanch leaves, everything growing. I didn't got the proper game, we'll have now. But he was nice and clean when he went in, I'm just wiping away the cobwebs and the, and the dust. And he completely rematting. He was washed at the end of the last season. So I'm just wetting, uh, put him in a bucket for 10 minutes or so. And just wrung him out. So he's damp when he goes in, as he is there. Just plug him in ready. He's out of the road under there. Which is good for me. Uh, what's that one there? Can't remember. Is that crap my brain? It's cream perfection. Is another good and another good gladi. I like them and all. So that's that's uh, about half my corbets. You in? As soon as the, we know the frost has gone, because uh, five days ago they forecast a good frost tonight. I thought, crap, I've got to, and I've thrown everything in the greenhouse and the tunnel. And I was going to call me to um, blueberries again. And now we ain't going to have a frost. It's going to be that one, I think, or two. Luckily, we ain't. It just shows you, you can't rely on them. Hound or lust tap or um, rain water. Right, Chilton seeds, I saw these, Cape Gooseberry. Well, that made me buy it. Paul, beware. <laughs> I put four in rag, you, you can have a spare. So I'm going to bump some of these in as well. Now the scented uh, old fashioned, these are what was dished out at our talk on sweet peas. And then um, the old fashioned, you've got to soak. I think so, it's the new ones now, you don't have to soak or nothing. So it's good, just got to be the old varieties. Sorting them out again. This is me, uh, good gog. Seeds are minute, which is about a spot in there. I think there's eight in a packet. So, one, two, three, four. So, Paul, you can have one when he comes through. And to the pool and all. More if he wants one. But, right, cover, just cover them with the, uh, the Mikulite. So, they much weight on them. That'll keep them warm for moisture. Uh, just off cold water, so I put a bit of hot water in there, so it's just like not too warm, but just takes that chill off. Got to help them out as, as much as you can. So it's, it's the first one that's gone in there. Got that first bit of sun for yonks. Just a couple of worms under one of these so I'll put them in my bin that's after three days just have to go in through it good lads right second inputter Cathy from Shrewsbury are you with us Cathy? I'm here yeah I was a bit late but I'm here now Austin this me yeah um, went for a walk in the week this is um just down the road, it's um, Shrewsbury's uh, Quarry Park. 
Um, so I took a few photos and thought it'd be nice um, to share with you. Uh, that's Penguin Boat Club um, in the distance and at the bottom of that path is the River Severn. Uh, I used to be a member of the boat club when I was a bit fitter back in the day, but uh, there we go. Next one please Mick. That's the bandstand at the, uh, the top of the bank there. Um, next one please Mick. So yeah, the uh, the Dingle Gardens that are sort of in in the quarry. I don't know if anybody knows it, but um, but they're all f planted out quite formally this time of year. So it's quite nice to see that they're all sort of you know, yeah, all coming into flower now. Next one, please, Mick. And there's a, a lake in the Dingle as well. Loads of fish in there. Loads of wildlife. And in the background is St Chad's Church. Next one, please, Mick. Some nice uh, tulips. Nice bit of colour. Yeah, nice, aren't they? Go well to that orange one. Yeah, look good. Yeah, I think there's, I don't know, is that a magnolia? I don't know. Looks like the chap in the shout yeah. really hard. Yeah. She wanted that, yeah. Yeah, it's almost like a bit, little bit of a microclimate because the, the dingle gardens, they're sort of like, they're sort of sunk sort of sunk down so they're uh, kind of quite sheltered in there yeah um, next one please mick oh, oh. my little one in the background <laughs> yeah there we go so yeah they're all really nicely sort of planted up really sort of nice bright colors there we go oh, always one. better when the sun's out isn't it yeah it does look lovely and there's a famous Shrewsbury Gardener, Percy Thrower, and so yeah, a remembrance to him there in the uh, in the Dingle as well. I think he's the first gardener I was introduced to when I come out of the mob when I got into gardening. Yeah. There we go. There's looking looking back from above, so it's all sort of planted out quite formally, and then behind that weeping willow is is where the lake is. But um, but yeah, it was a lovely day, really nice day for for a walk. Mm. So, yeah, sort of like a one of the entrance ways into the into the dingle. Is this secure at night? Is it all locked up? Yeah, it's all locked up, and I think yeah. um, there was a, a couple quite recently got got locked in there. So um, I think they're uh, they're on the lookout <laughs> just to make sure that uh, people have uh, have emptied out before they lock the gates. Yeah, somebody got locked in there not so long ago. And there's the um, Port Hill footbridge um, over the River Severn and the Boathouse pub in the background. That's a nice place to go and have a, have a pint of a summer evening. Nice. And there, looking back on the footbridge down the River Severn. There we go. Thanks very much. Cheers, Mick. Lovely. Cheers, Cathy. Thank you. Right, family fiends. Uh, Geoffrey mentioned earlier on um, although my Peter is self pollinated, I still help them out by tapping the, the the trunk and whatever it is when I go past. Plus, on a Friday night, I've, I've now started me last week, started me following things. When the sun was off, and, and the first one was um, some sorts, as we can see there. So, everything in the greenhouse, as you can see, the sun's gone. So drew the lot, everything gets uh, olive red. The smaller the particle, i.e. mist, the finer the mist, the better. But you don't want the plant dripping, just one or two sprays and that's enough. So everything outside as well, fruit trees. So even, even the small, like there's leaves on the top of these, so even they get everything. And that's me doing the the peach inside the tunnel. Uh, that's me lemon, two lemons I bought outside, as you can see there. The last photo you saw was closed up. Now the flowers have opened up, so I'm helping them as well by me spraying them outside. Also, my strawberry plants, these, these have took some um, frost this year, which have been bone dry for. The youngs, but uh, that's what they're meant for, luckily, when they've survived. But uh, just to help them out as well, I'll just spray them as well. So, all the house plants came out 
is, can only come out obviously when it's dry and the main thing when there's no wind otherwise because off these most of these are top heavy and the wind didn't take them over but like today just bring them out and give them a spray it's just a pick me up this is time you now spring when everything starts back into life starting to grow and they're left out to dry Uh, carry on flight bag. Worst film I've ever seen. Sid James Road, even in it. Brilliant. I thought I was going to nick that one. Right, bamboo canes. Straightens. Eight foots. I'm struggling now because I've finished uh, running our trading sheds. I know some of the I've packed in. Uh, and in over. Struggling now to get a decent eight foot cane. Because my uh, supplier we used to have, he, he's packed in uh, from Perry Bar. You've got a really big place. He was doing well. But the price has stopped, especially fertilizer, has shot up because of the, the rubbish that's going on in Ukraine, really Russia. Because there's quite a few fertilizers come from Ukraine. Of course, the price is shot up. And he says people ain't buying the normal gardeners can't get the first up well can't afford to buy and he just packed it don't blame him meaning i stocked up with decent canes uh only 10 so i got them all out because that's where they're going if you look closely it's an eight foot cane there what i'm going to do because you've got a bit of play where the stump is well you know anyway when they put these in because you can lift them out I mean they can't be tight because you've got to lift them out like I did to wallop mine on the other side so I've got a bit of gap meaning I can wedge that in my side if I pull him over when I'm the next door with shopping I'm going to put some wedges in on this side I shall ask him first but that'll stop me securing that in with the clamps or something I hope I don't get away that way. So all the posts will have one cane in. I still have netting up there. And uh, that's where my sweet peas are going to go. That's the idea anyway. Right, so I've got them all out. Obviously I want the straightest ones I can get. So that one was a bit of uh, kaolide. A hole as well. So I've got my ten there. The best ones. And I'm just going to wallop them. In the old fence. So it's the same colour as the fence, basically. Give them a good stir, give them a, a good painting. Build that in, now come round and do this in. Perfect. Next job. Got my full slot, which I got way to them. It will be propagator. This is coming out of the greenhouse, uh, closing up for the night. Well, I spotted these, that's a bit blurred, so I'll show you the next one. Just a sign that it's getting warmer. Ants. They were legging it about already. Another sign. Right, this is taking a uh, ruching uh, for a walk. This was a week ago, because this is Sunday morning, and the kids are footing. Well, there was this morning. And I started off in ruching. So I park up the back here, we walk down the back, round the back here, then up here, you know, all the fields this way. As I was walking up the road up here, this chap come out of the car, this lad was playing football, and he just says, You're on the compost block here? He says, Yeah, why? He said, I, I, saw, you, I saw you uh, 10 years ago, you were talking about composting the stoneway. Stuff at you. This is I remember. I've been watching you ever since. I says, Good lad. So it does work. Right, we came uh, gooseberries in there with the rest on them. These have been closed up slightly. I've got a bit of a drainage in there, so I'm, I was warm. 
Right, well, these have got about an inch of wear to him. So this is after 24 hours, and you can see the chaps have started to come through. So this is why you soak them. Well, this variety in your own. It's a bit closer still, but it doesn't work. All you're doing is open them out. Quick edge start. He's ready to split. He ain't gonna be too far behind either. So, perfect, look at him. Right, compost, uh, multi-purpose compost, or oh, maybe old oh, no, mixture where I've just bagged up with the Mickey light. Fill the drinking cup three quarter, and then dry medium, and you're gonna plant these three quarter inch deep, top up with um, dry compost. So three quarter of a grain medium in the cup, then water it. Then you plant your seed, your sweet pea seed, one per cup. And then you put dry compost in, and you don't water again until it comes through. But that was dry as a bone two days ago. And I was tempted to water it, but it tells you the old fashioned, that's the way that the, the destructions with it, so that's how the, the, the other three arms. So they were left out. So I've got trays out here as well, and there's one tray just soaking overnight. Then I put some more in. Uh, <coughs> also had these cannons as well, can of seeds. Uh, two new ones for me. Exactly the same again, a bit of water in the bottom of the cup. Labels, same name. Uh, raised bed top of the garden. This summer's out again. And the grid I've got on to keep the squirrels off, tulips, and then taffs started growing through, so I've had to elevate it, which I've seen here. That's on top of the house, but pain. That's elevated there. Uh, now we'll have them that I've had to take it up all together. Hoping. Uh, this afternoon I saw two magpies in there. God knows what they were after. And the blackberry. New growth coming on there. So that'll be me new growth for this year. And they will go up the centre. I want to go up from there, I want to go up from that way, in the middle, so that will give me fruit for next year. Uh, end of the tunnel of the garden, this, I don't know what the plant was last year, I thought I got all the old stuff up, but I'm just pulling this out as well, if it doesn't pull out clean, you're not chopping off from the bottom, but it always looks better when you got rid of all of those, oh poor! From Sonny Cradley, our third inputter. Alright, Mick. Are you ready, sir? Oh, you um, Good evening, all. Right. Um, can I just backtrack a bit first yeah. on the uh, on the sweet peas? You know, yeah. I had one of the I had one of the packets of the um, old fashioned. Yeah. And what I did, as she she suggested, so. Looking them into to see which were good and which were bad. So what I actually did was I soaked them in. Um, you remember that BBC one that we had off Evaponic? Uh -huh. Beneficial bacteria culture. What I did, I put a teaspoon of that in into a little vial and uh, topped it up with a bit of water and soaked the seeds in that. Uh, I've since then gone on to just no. I, I just threw them in a pot to be honest, covered them over slightly. And uh, it looks like uh, it looks like they're coming through nicely. Good. So uh, I'll keep you posted on what happens with them. Good but they look like they they look like they're going all right. Look like they're going well. Right, Good. moving on. 
this here is um, is a chili plant that I took to Malvern, the autumn show. Uh, it was for over, I think it was over, I think it was something like uh, 20 centimetres they had to be, the chilies had to be over that. Uh, it actually took second place at Malvern. So I brought it back and uh, it's gone back in the kitchen where you can see it now. Uh, and I thought, I'll tell you what, let's see if we can do it. Let's see if we can keep it going. Yeah. If we can carry on with it. So uh, I think if you move on to the next slide, that's what I did. Stripped it all back, took off all the dead leaves, all the chilies, everything. Um, just give it some plain water every now and again. Uh, it's probably been in about 10, 10 degrees all over the winter yeah um, and that's 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 not that's not how it looks now but that's how it looked then um i think if you move on to the next one yeah you can it's a bit out of focus but i don't know if you can see that there that's that that's actually uh looks like it's a chili trying to form yeah new shoot or yeah so there's loads of new leaves appearing on it good um and all I've done is give it some of the uh, some of the nutrients that I use from Evaponics. Uh, I've started uh, doing a very very weak feed on it, which is how I always start off. We always start off with a really weak feed and then build it up as the plant gets bigger. But um, it, it's looking a hell of a lot better than it is there now, and that's probably what what's that two weeks on into it from when yeah. I sent you these photos. Oh. Yeah, so I'll, I'll keep you posted with that, yeah. Um, these were dahlia seeds. Uh, again, I just uh, stuck them in there, watered them, nothing special. But they now, they're, again, two weeks on, they're probably four or five times bigger than what they are there. And we've probably got... Uh, 60 to 70 percent germination on them so they're doing really well yeah um, again they're probably for the bring and buy so what i'll do is i'll uh, i'll pot them on as they as they come along but uh i've done it twice now um and they're really easy to grow you don't know what you're gonna get that's the only thing uh -huh. uh, because they do say they're they're mixed but you, you just take pot, pot luck on what you're gonna what you're gonna get after it. But uh, I, I grew one last year and it uh, it was only four foot tall, loads of blooms on it, but they're only small blooms. But uh, it was still nice to look at. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Ah, um, you remember that onion I had off Nick Break about two years ago? Oh. Uh -huh. I put it down for seed. Uh, I had two lovely seed heads come off it, and uh, these these were put in oh, roughly about first second of Jan, something like that. And uh, again, I put twenty four seeds in, and I think I got 18, 18 onions growing out of it. Nice. So. You know, it, it just proves that you, you you can you can do it yourself. You don't have to go people and and get seeds off them and what have you. As long as you can keep it going and you can you can get the head there, yeah. And you can you let it dry out properly, take the seeds off it. I mean, that's that's proof that there was nothing special done there. I just let it dry out. It was in the greenhouse. Let the seed head dry out. I didn't even cut it back. You know, some of them say cut it back for the grass and one thing and another. Yeah. This was just purely the flowers and what the flowers developed into the seed. So I just shook them off and, uh, and well, there you go. It's, uh -huh. they're, they're growing great. They really are. Good. Nothing special. Yeah. We'll follow him through his life as well. Yeah. Uh, this is, um, this is a new product from Evaponic. It's uh, called Rapid Roots. It's um, 
it's a it's a rooting compound um but it's like gel. yeah yeah it's totally organic uh, it hasn't got the synthetics in it that a lot of a uh, lot of the other rooting compounds have got in it and uh, there's actually a there's actually a video on um i think it's on youtube or something like that of uh medwin's using it and uh he's he does a little video on it and he's done two lots of onions and basically what he's done is dipped the one lot into this this product and uh the roots are like far far superior to the ones that he didn't dip and uh well as you know he's well known for his onions and one thing or another so uh he was he was he was really bigging it up really saying how how, how good it is so they've given me this to try so uh what I'll be doing is I'll be doing a bit of an experiment and uh, obviously I'll keep you posted on uh, oh. on how that works. I mean, that that particular one there, you can get in 50 mil or 200 mil. What they've given me there is the 200 mil one. Um, I think that retails at about 43 quid, where the 50 mil one's at about, I believe that's around about 12 quid. Yeah. Um, but again, like I say, I'll be, uh, I'll be trialing it and I'll be telling you what happens and I'll be showing you the results hopefully. So, uh, good. That's all to come. Yeah. That's just explaining. It's a bit out of focus in it, but, uh, mm. it's just, it's just saying what it is really, what it does, how to use it. Um, it, it, it's as easy as, well, there it is. You just decant it into a, into a little, little vial or something like that. You dip your cutting in it. They do say that the cutting must be off a, off a viable, healthy growing plant. Yeah. You take the cutting, you decant a little bit into the, into the vessel. You dip it into about a centimetre, two centimetres. And then immediately put it into the into your your medium compost or whatever, and then preferably put it in a propagator. But they reckon within a week, two weeks, uh, you'll have like roots that you just would not believe in in that short time. It, it just no, well, it's pure science, isn't it? Yeah. At the end of the day. So uh, again, we'll be trying it. Oh, there's the wash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cheers for that, Paul. All right, all right. Good man. Right, this is Joe. This is Paul's missus. Well, I put her photo. It was last week I text the hound to walk. Well, I text Russian. And there's like me as a worm worshiper and all. It was picking it was a rain, it'd been raining night of hour. It's picking worms off the footpath. And I said, you know, I'm as soft as me. This is our ammo. There we am. We saved 12 today, Mick. Is it? <laughs> yeah, 12, yeah. Good. Yeah, says Jared got fed up with her. Keep picking them up. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember reading this in the paper. Um, was it last year or year before? Somebody legged it from a, an old folks home or a care home. True story about Bernard Jordan. Who escaped from his care home to attend the 70th anniversary of the D-Day landing in France? And uh, that'll be a good film when it comes out. I like him anyway, Mark Kane. He's a good lad. Right, sun's out. Second coat in. You know it makes sense. First coat in, you can still encode everything. Second counted, yes, that's better. Right, pruning. Basically pruning anything. All you're doing is shaping the tree, looking after it. Obviously the shape to what you want. You've got to have some of, doesn't matter what it is. But it's, it's not got to be thick. It's, you've got to uh, thin it out, so you've got air moving all the way through it. Then there's less disease, aphids, and uh, anything crossing, you look either take the weakest one off, 
if you don't any rubbing, because eventually that'll be a scar, and if you've got a wound and any disease, it'll get in there. Uh, some of the new old wood, which ain't got nothing on, take that off. You can see this one needs shaping. Because this rose was from the mother in laws, Kate wanted to bring it up. I Ben dug it up and I just bunged it in there just to look after the chat. But like any raised bed like that one, at the end of this uh, year, I had to be filled up, raised up again. Like any raised bed, they drop down through compaction of rain. As you can see, this one has dropped down. So at the end of this year, when he goes dormant again, I shall put him on his side, pull that out, put the pot back up again, put a good drop of muck under him, at least eight inches, and then put him back in upright. So he will come this way a bit. He's more upright, I can then train him better. I mean, I could leave him as he is there, just chop this lot off. You know, I've got a, a good musset there, but I've because that is the strongest stem, the thickest. Well, I've got it empty anyway to lift him. So all we're doing is pruning this chap. And most plants, you've got dead wood. You can see where this dead wood there has gone black and there's nothing on it. Just chop them off. There's another one that side, another one there. Then obviously you go all around the plant from all sides. And just do the same. Any old wood, which you can see that one is there, and there's no sign of anything on him, so he's past his cell by then. Just get as close to the base as your bottom, clean secretaries, and, and just take him off. So this is around the other side. Uh, you can see where he's jumped there. Now, these, I was hoping Jerry was on. So I just wanted to ask is this uh, frost damage? The frost has got to him, there's jobbed all these. But I'll get nothing later on. Still after the old wood, another one there, another one there. Just put them back to the new growth. One there, he come out as well. Just slice in that road, you still got this, because there's a new shoot on him. Put loads of new shoots. Another dead end. So chop him off as well. Right back to me blueberries. Exactly the same with him. Uh, I know new whips are coming up, but you can see the little shoots on the side. So I know I'm going to get um, growth off of them. Put any old stuff or even lie low in. Because he's got a, a, he's not a thick stem. If he was a thick stem like that, he'd be able to take the weight when this lot comes to fruit. Looking at that stem, he ain't going to be able to take the weight of that lot. He's going to hang down. Meaning, if it is hanging down, because of the floor, slugs and crap are going to get it. So, on strong and healthy stuff. But there's loads of bugs on. Anything uh, crossing again. Well, that one is hitting him. So the weakest or the one I don't want to come off. Basically, just look after the chaps, that's a bit out of focus. That was dead on the top of there as well. Just chop him off, and just make him out there. Just chop him off there and that. Is that the same as a rose was? You just go all the way around, shape it in. Uh, that blueberry was at the top there. This is another blueberry down the bottom. Uh, where he is there, I've just pulled him out slightly. So I can go around. I'll still get all the way around him. I'll still get a them boss at the back with him being there. This is a new growth. Right, that little whip there, that ain't gonna do nothing. It's too small. I'll draw that growth off the off the stems I've got up there. This is a pink sapphire, meaning he's a, a different, so it'd be a different colour, blueberry, obviously. The blueberry would be pink, so it looked better in my collection of veg. Uh, this is another one, 
uh, which you fruit flavor share what you want somebody else any any weeds out in there get them out you want all the nourishment grub or whatever go into the blueberry so not the weeds uh, old leaves they'll be taken off there's one crossing you've got new growth there just back into this uh, there's quite a few there dead ends one two three four Last Jerry uh, for next week. Cause that. Whether it is the frost or not. But uh, I think I chopped that one off in the end. But I'll just look after the chap, help him out. Just picking all the, all the crap out of the bottom. So all the grew, new growth spindly stuff at the bottom, just chopped them up. I'll draw that new new growth from up here. Look after them. Right, natural fertilizer for blueberries. Uh, blood meal. Used to frog that years ago. Can't get that now. Fish meal. I, I uh, liquid fish. I've got some uh, coffee grounds. Bone meal, powdered seaweed, that's your kelp, or your um, the seaweed meal. Still got some of that. Well, we are not struggling to get it for the trading chains, but the price of that is near enough double. Meaning people ain't going to buy it. They've got to be careful now what we're ordering. Well, I've got my seaweed meal and my fish meal. Blood meal and bone meal coffee grounds. Sweet peas from last year. I'm cutting all the dead stuff off, which I've done there. But, uh, there's loads of these coming back. The only thing is with these, they're not scented. But uh, they are coming back, so I'm going to leave the chaps in. Well, I'll be chapping the raised bed. My willow, flamingo willow. First time we did it last year, give us a, a, a nice display. But once again, he, he needs uh, tell him where to go, train him. Same as if you've got a dog or a kid. Dog and run wild. So that'll be chopped off there. I don't know, one whip coming down on his own. Just train the chap. Anything touching anything else, I'll take the weakest one away. Exactly the same again. So when this does get um, uh, flowers on it. It's quite thick, but I still want air movement in the middle of it. So I've just done it from the front, I'll now do it from both sides and at the back as well. So you've got a good shape. Well, I don't too much down here. There's a stuff that's growing down here. Uh, last year, this was touching these. So I learned my lesson from that from last year. And there is another job done. Well, I saw these, uh, I think it's just from work as well last year, maybe last year. I was looking at sweet peas. Uh, scented. I saw giant bloom. So I thought, that's another good one. I'll give him a go as well. So I've got that one. I've got the old fashioned mix. That was another packet. Plus, I've got my old league seed. Was for the bring and buy, which we got in May. Well, we hope to have. But when we have our talks, he's done a restaurant and he don't want any pots and crap going in. So, got our committee meeting Wednesday. If we're stuck for taking stuff in, we're going to be knackered for the bring and buy. Still, that's something for me to the committee to sort out. But I've always done tubs of uh, leaks. Meaning when they get them, they're ready to plant out in the pot. It's usually in the March when I start the, the seed off, but a bit late this year. I'm going to do them as well. Leaf seed's still okay. <coughs> Got room in here. 
Right, first one is I'll do my sweet peas. Same again, three quarters of the uh, cups filled up. Compost mix with a bit of uh, one seed in each. Give them a good way to it. Also, as more pots with uh, the bases in, so the compost don't go out the bottom. And uh, so thinly leak seed, just multi-purpose compost. That's all you need because there's no soil in there. The uh, be cleaner. There's no more, no acids out of the soil. Same as with, with carrots, growing stump carrots. Use multi-purpose compost. They come out clean as a whistle. So if you sow thinly, when they do come out, they won't be too thick. We'll be fighting for room from top and below. So I did four of the uh, leek seed and some more um, sweet peas. Right, last coating they've had. Go back on that one. Some of it I've never, I've never, never realised. But I've noticed it looking at these. I know it's the top of there, looked a bit, uh, well, I've missed a bit. Missed a bit, I got my ladder out and had a perv. Missed a bloody lot. Because this has got a corrugated clear sheet on. When I took that sheet off, I never thought about the wood, it's never been walloped. So since I noticed that, that's about five wallopings now. Because I've always done the top of these. Because these sheets come off before this one. That's all done now, that was the first, and that's soaking. That was what I put on, um, I, th I thought it was in focus with a, basically it's just life, young and old, because he wore in focus. Uh, this is your lunch the week, Ireland and England. England done a bit better from the first game in a row. I think we had a you know, chap sent off for one yellow card. I think that's been rescinded now, the men are common. So might have done a bit better if we still got it. Good game there. Right, you reunion last Sunday, that's why we weren't no zoom. We should have met up on the afternoon. I think he was there at half nine. Gordon bet it. So that that had been there about half hour, obviously got a couple. So I thought I'd better go around there and leg it. So I wanted to be a first one there when Colin was come. Uh, he's still fit as a forward. Don't forget, all the same age. We all joined up together. He was a PTI when he was in the Navy. I uh, That was the start of the sesh. Uh, Colin, we'll come on to him later on. I see who uh, got cancer. That was another one, Darby. He was a new one last year. Got bloody cancer as well. Cancer's a pain in the eyes. Phil is uh, come to the reunion. See there is me. There's the next lot. Let's see. If they got CT bigger, that means I've crossed the bar. I've died. I've lost him. Brad, he come to the reunion. Right. That's that club swinger. Who was sat next to me in that first photo. So there's Phil. There's Colin, we've got cancer. Luckily, his, his uh, grandson picked him up. Come on in, Russian. Up you come. Good girl. His uh, grandson bought him out. His, uh, I think his family would be very happy. If they had bought him out, I'd have dragged him out. But he dealt with very well there. But he's still with us. He can't keep, he can't lie down. He has to. Only cork it was in that much agony yesterday. Do his best in a, in a chair. And his, his meds are doing sod all. And a couple of months back, more from the last reunion, he'd, uh, well, he, he couldn't kip because he'd, he'd bust ribs. Somebody says, You've bust a rib. He says, I can have bust a rib, but I haven't done anything. And he hadn't busted. Cancer had broke it. The cancer had eaten away his ribs. And that's why he was in extra pain 
and that's why the doctor couldn't work it out. He says you're on the highest morphine, whatever he was on. He says, cool, anyway. But he did come for the afternoon, he had a couple of hours with us. So it was good to see him. It was a Boston night. Coming out for the piddle, this is on the back of the door. I've got my defence uh, discount in, uh, 25% off. When I went to see them in the bar stuff, I said, well, they put this outside so everybody can see. I said, I nearly missed it. He said, it's only for grub. He says, that'll do. So we all had to meet later on. And then old Phil got his bottle of rum out. I said, bloody all right, that. Let me go and get permission first. This is my area. I got permission off them. Just as a one-off. Toast to a uh, friend's gone, obviously. And uh, I got Mick Sealy from our watch, Red Watch House, I mean, smudge to come along. Now, uh, um, seven o'clock on the evening, an hour of six. I said, Rod, well, explain these two. I said, when I was in the fire service, she's hours though in your fire station, which I passed up the top of the road where it used to be. These two are on my watch, X Forces. Mix of para, still enough back with them now. And Smudge was our leading fireman, and he's ex Ganges as well, meaning he joined up the same place we joined up. And he was a submariner, same as Phil. And uh, they went down well. And that's just us lot toasting a drop of his uh, pusses rub. Gunpowder proof, but he was at all. But it was good, good sesh, good to see the lads. We got another one in there, July. Hoping. Colin and Lass. Right, if they look after us, then I'll, I'll give them a good review. Elder Naval Reunion here yesterday looked after us by all the staff, all day and all night. Then again for breakfast. Excellent, excellent event all round. Cheers, staff. So that was a good ride up for them. Well, I've got a tour the next day on that night, which uh, Mrs. Wolf bees, so I've just had a Sunday night out with the lads. I've got a Sunday night out because it was a bed and breakfast job, it was North Wales, and I'm going out to coffee grounds, so I had to leg it down to Tesco and make some coffee grounds. Well, asking for it. Afternoon, got a spare hour, right, this had the third and final coat. That's where I went, North Wales. Uh, Denby and talking to me one of my ideas I dropped the papers off to in the morning I says I ain't um, here I've got to talk to you got to get on paper and it turns out I used to live here but a Boston place and some of the venues are good which I found out why later on which we'll come on to Four gooey, nice to me because you've got any uh, contacts for seaweed and take off from the sea or uh, sheep muck, which we call it. This is no, but I've got some donkey muck, and that's what he gave me. A bag of donkey muck, he's a good uh, trolley for that. Boston set up, nice big screen. Uh, and gaffer. And mate, he's, he's behind there. There's his missus. They put me up the night and all, instead of paying for a. Uh, B and B, travel lodge or whatever. But turn out in the end. There's quite a few blokes there and all. And this is where he lived. Obviously when we got home he was dark, so I took this next day. Basically, this was an old primary school. They had it for a well obviously the price they could afford. But they got two outbuilders as well. But inside. Uh, that's the name of the place, whatever that says. But it was huge, and you reckon that originally down the back was the hall of the primary school. It was open, he's put that mezzanine roof on, and that's another bedroom, but it's huge. That's on night, we had a couple of pints and the uh, cheese and bickies. Just caught up, up on a bit of gossip. But it was a costing noise. Now this is right out in the sticks. It's about um, 10 minutes from Denver. It was a, obviously a road up here, a lane. 
But we I never saw a card or anything. So it, it is peaceful. Straight opposite this field here. He asked me Gaffin if he could uh, buy some land nothing. Because he needed um obviously a bit more land to grow veg. He says I ain't flogging nothing. He says I'll give you a bit. I'll fence it in for you. And you pay me five quid rent a year. He says that'll do, and that's what he's done. And he's just starting to raise beds. Beautiful. So there's his uh, premises where he lives. Lanes here, obviously. And he's even put a fence in. Uh, a gate there for him to get up there. Which is brilliant. So he's got his bins. And that's his, uh, eventually his chore shed. So he's carrying them over from home. But he's uh, getting into no dig as well. He's a green manures. But he's starting his raised beds that end coming this way. For a Boston setup, just over the back there, some wind turbines, which we'll come on to later on. Meaning that not an eye saw for it. So that's going back over the lane again, <coughs> into his uh, so we walking down that side, which we've done there. That's where he milked for his missus last year, and that's what I wanted to venture out there. Uh, put his, um, put his ante anything because it's all the work is doing on there itself and that was so much he's growing through anybody recognize it you did tell me the name so we give it a G Manic Gunner sorry Manic Gunner is it Gunner Gunner that's it all when he's, a, when, when he's uh, in flower it's a corker Right, so this is gate here for the house. This is um, a public, public footpath. So obviously that's all. But they've also utilised this place down here, space. And down there they've got fruit trees, which are down there. And this was the original playground for the school. And that's still there. So that's still there for the villagers. I thought, that's good, eh? You could have a, a, a barbie. Just leg it over there, extending back garden. There's all the all these fruit trees down there. So you just borrowed a bit of land. You can still walk through, whoever walks through. But it's used to like utilised all the space uh, around the buildings as you can see. That, that's why he wanted that land over on the side so he could do his bed. But uh, Boston, and that's it, another little cubby hole he's got. And that lean to there, some trap, when he said. But uh, beautiful. Breakfast in the morning. And then proper bread with a mid -mar uh, marmalade. Brilliant. All right, why do I mention these? All right. <laughs> this is a photo I've just took of these, but because he mentioned these, I was on, on the landscape, which I don't need to know, but he said if you live closer there. But anybody who's got these, I don't realise. But the local community get thousands from the company, whoever's put them up. And uh, they can have new community centres, town or whatever, on football pitch. And obviously, free power and all to a certain few or cheap power. Bloody hell, I'll have one at the end of the garden. If that works. This was little last week. I saw these uh, lemons. Saw at the back. Bit of a dire state. I forgot the name of them. Not Mandarin. Some like an orange. And the no. Kumquats. That's it. You got it. I was just going to say Kumquats. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I was always an orange. I've looked into them before. They don't fruit for our show. That's going to be overwintering like that, was it? That's a new one for me, um, Mitchell. Because I've got, I haven't got extended shears on. I've got short shears. 
So I was like, what? I'm going to renew. Here's Russian. It was nicking all the sweet peppers out of there. And that's after a week. Put me bits in. Where did it leave? So the tunnel again tonight has got everything in there. Because they did forecast the frost. For them all done ready. Perfect. Same colour as the fence. That'll please Hartley. Right, that locked fence now. Because I've walloped this. Looks a bit shabby. So I'm going to wallop them before this lot gets a bit uh, overgrown. Right, nice and dry. So I started walloping this in. Lifted them with my cane, put my canes in. So I can get my paper underneath to wallop that. So it doesn't go on here. Push one done, lifted the next panel. I managed to get two done on the first night before it got too dark. Right, looking at me uh, raspberries here, started eating the net I put on. Stop the squirrel bearing his nuts. I've got to lift that with the uh, raspberries just smacking into it. Next day, I'm pulling all this back, tying it back. So I've got to do that panel and this lot that we put over there. Just slowly get it up here. Right, I've lifted them. The pegs that I'm in there, I've just put the pegs back. And that is just holding the net off. Perfect. Right, that was done. So he's, he's, so he's pulled back here. So he's now tied back on the wire. So I've got there. Just back out the wire there. So he's pulled away this one. Shrub there, which is pulled back from the string as well. So I'm getting to that one. And I've got about halfway through with that one. So now in another month's time, that's going to be plastic, it's going to be covered. But I've got away with it. Less than two days, I've done the lot. Perfect. Tied all the original stuff back where it's supposed to be. Another job out the road. Well, I'm just helping me chop sound because everything's starting to grow up again. I've given the liquid fish feed. Just to give them a pick me up. Here's the thing, spring pea, just starting them off. Although I'm not going to wait two years for germination. If they do come through, I'll pass them on to somebody else. Oh, wish you were at me. Lizzie, I'm oh, sorry, mate. I've lost you. Was it Queen's Tears? Sorry, lost him. For parking only, and the others will be told. Got it. Is this Saturday? I think it was, wasn't it? England Women's Rugby. That's when it started, that's when it finished. Brilliant game. Once again, they showed up the blokes. Right, Mrs. Well, she decorated his paper, decorated. No, I decorated. She. Well, I've got my nerves disease. The tablets are looking after me, it made me dizzy. Not till petal will get up a ladder or nothing. So, paint something, there's a lot of money in there, paint something to do it. And that was a tester. And that's two coats dry. That is supposed to look like that. This is Dulux. Jesus, what? No one have complaints of testers that would be bloody well. Right, front of the house. Um, because you've got the protection there. Alstrom area coming through nicely. There's two um, azaleas there. Right, I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. The experts, I got in touch with them. He says, I want me to put my input in. And there. A cock up on men because I've had no reply, but I've looked into all these that I've put on and you've got to pay for them. Meaning they get a cut out of everything. Everybody clicks on theirs. This is now minor free. That's why they got in touch. Their loss. Tonight, well done lads. Uh, 
that's it guys and girls it will be a zoom next uh, sunday